Analysts have criticized the lack of transparency in Nigeria's oil sector, pointing out the unclear pricing mechanisms in deals between the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPCL, and Dangote Refinery raises concerns. Now, they faulted the opaque nature of the transactions involving crude oil pricing between the Dangote Refinery and the NNPCL. They also argued that transparency is a fundamental expectation in global oil markets, yet the NNPCL has not provided critical information such as the cost Dangote Refinery pays for crude oil or the exchange rates applied. Public affairs analyst Mustafa Iwinla joins me now for more discussions on this issue. Good morning to you, Mr. Thanks morning, for joining Justice. us. Thank you for having me. All right, you know, just before we, we got on air here, you know, in our pre-chat, I was asking him um, what is it really that um, Nigeria or Nigerians really enjoy? You know, despite the fact that we have government, uh, we have, um, you know, we pay our taxes and everything. Is it good roads? Is it electricity? Is it uh, uh, energy generally? Everything. We have to struggle for it. Supposedly, we have crude oil in abundance, and yet there is a back and forth uh, concerning the pricing of uh, petrol, which affects practically everything you know that has to do with the economy, from households to the macro economy. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm saying this because over time uh, it was as though uh, the coming on stream of uh, Dangote refinery would be like um, the solution to all the major issues we have concerning petrol scarcity, pricing, and security of um, you know. Getting getting it all the time. Yeah. But the thing is that right now, it's as though it's really sh shrouded in secrecy and um, Nigerians are even the ones bearing all the brunt. So that's, that's, that's quite unfortunate. Uh, just like you said, that, so a lot of us would have thought that um, the commission of Dangote Refinery would be a solution to all our oil and gas problem, particularly in the petroleum sector. Mm. But it is clearly evident that we, uh, I mean that those issues in our petroleum sector, particularly our down, downstream sector, oh. is not going to come to an end anytime soon. But again, I think it's very important that we must state crystal clear that anybody expecting Dangote or Dangote Refinery or the company to sell below oh. cost price, that person must be living in a dream world. Dangote is a businessman. This man is out to make money. This man invested close to 20 billion US dollars on this project. So the fact that Dangote wants to, you know, make petroleum products more available to Nigerians mm. and other neighboring countries does not mean that it should sell below cost price. Now, we've seen that the loggerhead between NNPCL and Dangote Refinery also is not going to, is not going to also come to an end anytime soon. Mm. Because we've seen that there's a lot of secrecy, there's no transparency, and the, I, I, I personally think that there are some elements in that sector, in the petroleum sector, that are trying to stifle this, or you know, you know, frustrate this uh, young man mm. as, as a person. But again, if we don't get it right with our energy mm. security as a country, there are certain things that we must not joke with energy security, food security, job security. Those three things are very germane. If you don't get it right in, in those, three, those three items I just mentioned, yeah. we're, we're not going to prosper as a country. I get all of that, yes. but Mustafa, I'm just trying to use uh, common sense logic yes. or just uh, what we have had over time and yeah. what is right now. Because before now, uh, we have crude oil, yeah. we uh, export them, you know, to refineries abroad, uh, there are issues of um, shipping, transportation, yeah, and other parks, logistics. Yes. You know, they bring back refined uh, petrol to us for use. And most of the times, uh, logistics issue we don't even get them on time and all yes. of that. But in yes. this case right now, I'm thinking that um, we've been able to cut out the the the, the costs of. Uh, Transport, transporting crude yeah, uh, yeah, outside yeah. Nigeria. Yeah, I've been able to cut down the cost of uh, the refiner, the wages of the refiners, uh, the, the, the workers there. So one would have thought that logically, you know, will be, we'll be very low because we are not paid so much. But it's as though the mass is not massing, the economics is not economic in order. <laughs> I don't know how to put it at so, all. So, so, so to a layman, so, a yeah. lay, so, so that's that's to a layman thinking. So a layman would think that naturally, because Dangote is getting crude oil from Nigeria, ordinarily, naturally the price for Dangote 
uh, the, the palm price should be lower than what NFPC is doing because NFPC is currently exporting out of the country mm. to, to refine. Yes. Yes, that's that's what should have happened. Mm. But in a country where in a country where Dangote is trying to do all these things as in his own individual capacity. So so don't forget that not just the crude oil, so, so what it takes to produce petrol petroleum product is not just the crude oil. There are other mm. essential things that he also still needs to import. Mm. The you know the uh, the other other chemicals and other stuff that he needs to mm. for, 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 for you to have a finished product into petrol. There are other items he also still imports to this country for him for him to have his you know uh, the, the landing cost and all that. So so but yes, naturally that's that's what should have happened. But again it's very funny because if I if I tell you the big the, 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 the country that has the biggest refinery in the whole world mm. is India. Mm. That that refinery is called uh, I think Jam Jamnaga Jamnaga refinery. The Jamnaga refinery has a capacity of about one million two hundred and forty thousand capacity. Mm. This refinery is private sector ownership. It's owned by it's, it's owned by a certain company called Reliance. Okay. So trust me, this company has been in existence for over 25 years. Mm -hmm. It's private owned. Mm -hmm. And I do not think that the Indian government is frustrating the, for, for this company to have been in existence for 25 years. I do not think that they are going through this type of logger with, their, with, their, with the government of the day in their country. That's why they are able to function properly and they are able to produce at their full capacity. So if Dangote refinery is just two months or three months old and there's already a lot of squabble already, mm -hmm. so I can imagine what will happen three months or six months or one year down the line. So for me, I think that I think that the government of the day needs to understand that this man came in as a, as a result of trying to solve some problems. Yes, because for years, and our refineries have never worked. So the, so the, 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 the government-owned refineries are more rebound. Mm. And this man has just invested billions of money in this refinery. Mm -hmm. So it is very, very sad to see that just two months of commissioning, just two months or one month after commissioning, all these problems are emanating. Now, let me now tell you, in my own opinion, yes. I think that there are some, there are some, there are some, there are some elements in NNPC, or there are some cabals in this country. That don't who, work it to work. That, do, that does not even want Dango, the idea of Dangote refinery is, is, is getting them exasperated. But why would anyone in their work. clear thinking It's for sense. selfish reasons, and it's for, it's for because, it's, so it's, it's because it's for selfish Because they're benefiting reasons. from the it's system. For, and of course. So our oil and gas system is such that everybody's attention is towards that area. Oh. Even the government is towards that. Everybody's focusing all their energy towards the oil and gas sector. So the whole idea of Dangote refinery to some set of people in this country is a big problem, is a big threat to them. They don't want it to work. And I, that's why I, this man is going through all this. I, I get all of that, but I'm yes. also thinking somehow, um, shouldn't the government uh, in its own way, maybe some sort of um, incentives, you know, I don't know how much, because till now we don't really know exactly because there are differentials as per what uh, the exact price that they sold yeah. to Dangote. Dangote uh, was claiming that um, they had to Im import the first um, um, you know, batch of them crude for them oh, yeah. to meet their, you know, their, their, their needs. You know, w w as a way of um, bringing all of this issue uh, completely over, to make it completely over, don't you think, the, since we have this crude, yeah. Yeah. I don't know, I'm thinking in my head, yeah. can't we sell at a particular price, you know, to Dangote in a way that would actually be beneficial to all parties. At the end of the day, Nigerians can actually get uh, this product at a cheaper cost. Since we have it from, I mean, it's there in the waters. Mm. Down there, we can explore more oil and get more. I don't know. So, so as it is, if you look at what the president, what the president did a few months ago by saying mm. that... Should sell should sell, mm. to, I mean, to sell crude oil to Dangote and other local refineries mm. in there. Yes. That policy hasn't taken effect yet. No, it hasn't. It takes effect on October 1st. Yes. So up until then, till this minute, they are still selling in dollar. Mm. And if you look at what happened, NFPC is saying publicly that they bought petrol from Dangote at, as at, I think, 898 Naira. Per yes, meter. 898, yes. And the Dangote refinery is saying that that's not the price they bought it. Mm. They're saying that they sold to them in dollar, dollar equivalent. In, in dollar equivalent. So mm. there's a lot of I don't know why. Oh, so don't even know the exchange rate. You don't even know the at what rate was mm. what bought. Mm. So at even the crude oil, even so at so at what rate did Dangote sell to mm. uh, the NFPC? And uh, another thing that I think is a problem: why is NFPC the only off taker from Dangote refinery? Why 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 I mean, why is it that other individual marketers are not allowed to go 
you know, take their petroleum products from mm. the refinery directly. So mm. by the time it becomes like this, the price for the price that common Nigerians will pay for a liter is going to be because it's, it's now becoming from hand to hand. Mm -hmm. NNPC will go and lift Middle it. Middleman, yeah. They will now sell to individual marketers. Those ones who will go yeah. and lift from NNPC, they will now sell to Deport. Deport will now start to sell. So there's a lot of, so before you know it, everybody wants to, everybody will have their own little token just to make profit. Mm. And at the end, the poor Nigerians, the common Nigerians will be the ones to suffer. Mm. So I can imagine that people are already buying four per liter now for 1,000 naira per liter. Some over a thousand. Some, yes. if you go to states that are very low, if you, in fact, if the northern state, because yes. I've lived they in buy, it not before. They buy more. Some states don't even have, a, a whole local government don't even have one single filling station. Mm. So they have to buy from direct black market by the roadside. Mm -hmm. So those ones, would, because they have to go and carry their petrol from maybe the cities yes. to, the, to the local government, and you yes. have some local government as far as two, three hours drive from the city. So you can imagine that they now have to start selling black market, buying black market. So it's going to be somebody maybe around one, two, or one thousand, three hundred naira per liter. Mm. So I think that again, our oil and gas sector is definitely overstretched. Mm. The government needs to be more proactive as it is because if I, if we don't get this issue of our energy correctly, mm. we are going to continue to I mean in, increase in Nigerians, that's poverty. That's, yes, we are going to continue to increase job loss hmm. because we are getting to a stage where I'm, I was telling some of my colleagues yesterday we are getting to a stage where if we are not careful we are going to frustrate this man because I mean already is is in the news every day lamenting hmm. about all the orders. I, 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 I was even going to ask because a uh, two months old refinery. <laughs> this this man is already lamenting. So I, 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 so. If this man ventures to say, you know what, I, I, I'm not doing let it. me just start exporting my, yes, my petroleum I, I, product I, I, out of the to country. Nigeria, I'm not selling okay. to Nigeria because it seems <laughs> okay, like... But then again, I, I've been thinking, you know, because sometimes, you know, when you have, um, even at that, there's, there's, uh, there's even a downside to it. I was thinking, yes. too, in my head, that um, what if we had more players uh, in the downstream sector, uh, maybe more refiners, you know, you know, would it in any way bring about um, any... Uh, reduction in prices, but still thinking about um, all of the issues that have um, you know, happened before now, one would um, wonder if any people, anyone would want to really invest in the downstream sector, judging by what uh, we have been seeing uh, in the past two months. So it is obvious that if, I mean, it is obvious and clear that with what Langote is currently going through right now, with the loggerhead with mm. NFC and all that, this is obviously going to scare potential investors that want to come into the sector away. Mm. If you go to if you go to Venezuela, Venezuela has, I mean, after 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 Jamnaga refinery in India, the next mm. biggest refinery in the world is Paraguana refinery in Venezuela. Okay, that that refinery has a capacity of now there are seventy one thousand barrels per day. Okay, and that refinery is government owned. Mm -hmm. So if a country like Venezuela can own a refinery that has that capacity, the second biggest refinery in the world, mm. Dangote refinery is the seventh biggest refinery in the world and the number one refinery in Africa. In Africa. Mm. So Venezuela has the second biggest refinery in the world and that refinery has been in existence for over a decade or two decades. Government owned. How are they doing it? So, it is, so the problem is if Nigeria as a country cannot maintain our four refineries, mm. so please, and we have individual, individual you know, investors coming in to invest their added money into the sector, just to salvage the situation, and the government is frustrating them like this. I do not think that any potential investor will still want. If if somebody has, as uh, I mean, Dangote is not small too. I mean, he's, no, he's not, so he's not small. So he's if somebody as Dangote is going through this, mm. so somebody who is not up to Dangote that, that tries it, we have other smaller refineries. Yeah. They are also going through the same orders. Okay. We have we have we have Opac refinery in mm. Bori. We have the Watersmith refinery in Delta. Out. They are also going through the same orders. So so regulatory orders, government trying to regulate them and and the whole idea of allowing NNPC to be the sole administrator of this sector is a problem. Mm. I think that's but, a problem. We, we're all aware what happened, uh, you know, with um, Dangote, you know, so many uh, conspiracy theories, even when he uh, brought um, his, his petrol, they were saying that it was substandard, mm. you know. But come October 1st, now, do you really think that um, if they actually start selling to the refiners yeah. in Naira, uh, value denomination that um, some of these issues would actually be a thing of the past. If they start selling to them in Naira, yes, yes. So, so that's the whole idea, and that's why the president said that sell crude oil to Dangote and other refineries in Naira, so mm. that the, the 
the production cost for these refineries can actually come down mm. and the cost that they are going to be selling to you know to marketers also is going to be reduced but let's hope that come first of october if that is implemented <laughs> we hope that the price hopefully the price can come down and also i think generally mm. what is playing out in our in our oil and gas sector generally for me I think that we are just making a mockery and a mess of our Petroleum Indust Industry mm. Act of 2021. That's the honest truth. Because that act was, you know, naturally enacted just mm. to regulate all the physical and legal, okay. and, you know, framework within this oil and gas sector. But yeah. it seems that we're not following mm. what the act is supposed to be doing. Mm. And that's where, again, the government needs to come in. All right. We cannot continue in this manner. I mean, the, I mean energy is a very crucial and essential commodity for All everybody right. in this country. I mean, so so if we can get it right, I think we'll get every sector of the economy right. We we'll just have to get our um, energy right because yes. um, uh, most of our it practically affects everything, everything yes. that we do. Everything. You know, we are a mono product economy. We, we do, yeah. uh, rely solely on crude, you know, to meet all our international, you know, transactions, even yeah. for the borrowings that we some some are even pegged to the barrels per day that we produce. Yeah. We we'll just hope so because at the end of the day, if we don't get it um, right, Nigerians are the ones who are suffering. You know, you know, at the end of the day, we cannot commute from one place to the other. Food prices will increase. Yeah. Uh, everything, commodities, That's you know, just uh, so. Thank you so much, Mustafa, for thank your you, time. You, you know, you because. Uh, this issue of fuel is one thing that every Nigerian is very passionate about because and everybody's, everybody's our waiting for the health mm. And that's the size of the show for today. I am Justin Akademi. See you again next time. Bye for now.